Well, today we're um, talking about our new engine installation. Uh, Cree did a great job shoehorning this thing into a tight space. Um, we do have a few things we need to talk about, but first, Cree, what what'd you run into in trying to get this engine in and aligned and in place? Well, like in most situations, a new engine doesn't fit on the old engine beds. Okay. So th this was no different than any other engine that we run into when we're replacing a, a, a new engine where an old one was. Uh, you can see the engine beds have been substantially modified. Um, we had to make them longer uh, towards the bow and, and then cut it out at the back end of the engine mount so that we could get the, or the engine bed, so that we could get the engine sitting at the right angle to take the angle of the shaft going through the V-drive. Well, despite all the modifications, Cree, the good news is that you didn't have to dig the old shaft log out of the back of the keel. Existing shaft log, so right. we basically started aligning this engine from behind with a new cutlass bearing in there. We took an old, another cutlass bearing uh, and put that in the front end of the shaft log so that we could make sure that we have the shaft dead straight in okay. the log and then align the engine to that shaft. So the selection of the 50 horse beta, it's a little bit bigger engine. Did you have uh, some installation problems that were a little unique to uh, that weren't? No, kinda... it, fit, it fit in just as we expected. Okay. Um, you know, without any huge modifications necessary. Um, other than the engine beds, as mm -hmm. we knew we were going to have a problem there. Um, but e even with that being said, we still have a lot of challenges to make. Okay. Um, the exhaust being one of them. Um, and yeah, because space is so tight here. Absolutely. I don't know. We, we have want... a number of other accessories we've got to put in. Exactly. So. And okay. we're going to end up with... Uh, a real tight engine box, but still leave room in the engine box for plenty of insulation so that we can cut down the noise. Okay. Cree, the engine itself has a lot of things that have to be added yet. We have a water muffler. We have the hoses leading to it and away from it and getting it routed back to the transom. And then because of the way we've bought other equipment, we have some other requirements. And I hope we're all thinking through this, this whole thing, but we have, we have a new bilge pump and that it requires a hose. We have an intake valve for the raw water cooling. And then we have um, a big two inch hose that has to snake through here for Whoa, the crash wait a minute, pump. Wait a minute, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, that was, that was not in the original contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, there are, uh, there are a, a lot of yeah. items that need to go in here. And okay, so, so like, yeah, we probably ought to walk through all those elements, but a absolutely, and and we'll we'll be doing it more than once. Right, I'm sure because we'll find that that we're crisscrossing drains with with pickups and okay. and then don't forget we need room for wiring too. Oh, yeah, yeah. because our batteries are in the bilge and have to snake Forward through here to too. I, you know, I'd forgotten about that, yeah. but yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to find that orientation yeah. as well. So we're, everything we do is gonna be either drawn or mocked up right. and make sure it all passes easily before we put it in place for final. Okay. So I guess one of our first questions you shocked me with this morning was the ex actual exhaust manifold because um, we're going to put the water muffler box under the engine and then lift it out the back, which didn't match with the elbow that we had in here kind of angled back and immediately started interfering with the companionway stairs. Right. And we've been very lucky. We're very close to being able to use the same pitch. Um, so it, we've ended up modifying that riser so that we can make a straight pitch to the bilge. And I guess, what do we need to do with that? Okay, so the most important thing with the water injection elbow is to make sure that the water does not re-digest any of the water that goes into the exhaust system. All right. So one of the primary things that we work with is trying to keep the injection portion of the exhaust elbow below the exhaust manifold. All right. And and in cutting this apart, we're, 
and and allowing all of the exhaust to go down below the engine it simplifies our uh, water injection installation because it's a bit. happening a lot faster it's, and it's, it's still below the out the exhaust output right and it's also happening closer to the exhaust manifold which means that we're taking uh, heat out of the engine box quicker okay which is going to help us yeah. later on I've got these what do we do <laughs> okay <laughs> where are we going with okay this? so this this elbow turns the turns the exhaust okay. down immediately so what we're doing is kind of eyeballing it to angle it between the side of the beds here and the transmission right right and then the next piece is the injection and the this is salt water coming out of the heating loop Right. right out of the heat exchanger right and then into the injection system okay. here and you can see that it's yeah. sleeved wow we're just getting <laughs> rained on yeah. um, it, go, it goes oh i see so that's jacketed it's a jacket and then the fitting. hose fits over it and right. it'll just be spraying yeah. water on and top so we'll put this down below it nice and tight nice and tight and so these are the marks, right, that we're looking for? Right. Okay. And that's where, like... we're, that's where we'll weld it. Okay, let me see, make sure we have clearance on everything. Maybe a little bit more that way. Okay, we just want to make sure we can slip a hose on there. Right. And I'm and actually going to turn this one way, a little bit. By the way, no matter bit. what marks we put on these, <laughs> the welder is going to come up here and, and verify that they're correct. So right. we're, we're giving him an indication of where it should be. All right. That's good. He's going to double check us because I'm, right. not, I'm not really sure. It's like kind of hard to really eyeball this whole thing. No, yeah. Really... Okay. Well, there we go. We got a good mark up the top. Good mark here. And it's going to shoot it straight down between. And then we'll design a water box to be right. The pickup for the water box will be right under that, right? Right. And the water box is designed to hold two gallons of water, okay. which should be enough to drain the line from its highest point back, back into the box. the box without coming up to engine height. Because yeah. the fear here is that the water pump, the raw water pump that's pumping salt water through the engine is turning as you're trying to start. Correct. But you're not creating enough gas off the engine. The revolutions are too low, so it just starts accumulating water in Correct. the water muffler. Correct. And it could back siphon up this way. Yeah. So we want to make sure we have enough capacity and that we we get it uh, get it started. Absolutely. Okay. I assume we'll have a drain in there that if we had to drain the box we could as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. That's a good cautionary. Um, and then from here, after this is all put together, um, we go into a water box which we're going to mock up and make out of fiberglass. Yes. And then that's going to have a hose, I assume, leading pretty much straight out. It's going to go at a slight angle so that we can come up behind the engine, in between the engine and the hull, and go up behind the instruments here Okay. to a high point. Right under the cockpit seats? Right. And you want okay. to get that high point as near the center line as you can All right. Uh, so that if you're on a port or starboard tack, you don't end up with a low point. Right, I got you. Um, and then we'll we'll follow that on a downward angle all the way to the transom. All right. And we're we're gonna end up putting a valve at the transom just as for a, extra a safety. Guarantee. Okay. Right. So that when we're sailing the boat and for instance uh, uh, you may get pooped with a wave coming up from behind mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you're not filling up your your uh, right engine with, with uh, salt water okay. from there. A few of the other things that go with this is trying to locate the through hull for the raw water pump, which takes in the seawater. Now we talked about a number of different locations under the cabinetry of the quarter berths, but someone made a suggestion, and I think it's a pretty good one, of just putting that through hull down here somewhere in the bilge. Um, yeah, I, I would like to put it down in the wall of the of the bilge here. All right. Um, it's accessible that way. It's, it's accessible. You mm -hmm. can see it. We can put the raw water filter down here also. Okay. Um, and there's enough room that we can accomplish yeah. all of those items this, without you know, impacting. mock-up of a raw water filter. We could yeah, I mean, it just, get this in. 
that would be fun. Right. Otherwise, it has to kind of go on the bulkhead up here where you can that, get to it as well. That real estate is going to get gobbled up pretty fast back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep, keep thinking we have more space than we really no. do. Yeah, that would be fine because as long as we can get the top case off of this, we can get to the strainer. Right. And um, so, okay. Um, let's see. The other thing we have that we're going to put in here is an electric bilge pump and a float switch, which is going down in the very bottom of the bilge. So we have a small hose. I think it's either an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth hose. No, it comes off maybe it's an inch. Inch. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be down in the very bottom of the bilge. And right. The, um, and that will drain anything that should come in down the companionway or. Right. Or the packing. Or packing yeah. band or any of that. Um, and that hose will run probably parallel with this uh, with the big exhaust. One. And yeah. we also have another two inch hose that's coming from our emergency pump, the Edson emergency pump. Right. And that we just tried mocking that up and it looks like it's gonna fit right under the engine beds on this side and be able to get in there. And we'll put, um, a, put a, a filter on the end of that so we don't pick up any debris that right. will clog that pump back right. there. Uh, but it'll just be laying down there the uniform next, uniform. next to the other bilge pump. And then we have another item here, which is the Raycor filter. Okay, now we're getting fuel. into this <laughs> real estate back here that I was talking about. All right, so what do you think is going to end up here? Well, so we've got a Raycor filter, which is an essential piece. And that's filtering the, the fuel All right. before it goes to the engine. And you want to be able to, to see into this bowl. Right. To make sure that you're not injecting water at any point into the into the engine from the fuel system. Okay. So we'll have piping here going through. Perhaps a a lift, an electric lift pump in the system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once it started, it probably siphoned pretty well. But it's you know, having a lift pump is always a good idea. Right. And a lift pump is going to help us if we should ever get air in this in the engine. You can. Uh, change your filter, turn the pump on, energize the whole system, yeah, yeah. And, and drive a lot of the air out of your fuel system okay. with the pump. All right, and the engine controls are up here. Correct. And uh, what else can you think of that we need to kind of think through other than the wiring, which is going to be? This is going to be taken up with a lot of wiring. Yeah. I mean this. There's your bundle. Right. We have the two big batteries that we have, the AGM batteries, with fairly heavy cable coming forward. They're going to go to a master battery switch, which is right over here by the engine where it was originally. And then the starter is on this side. And then a feed will come off the master battery switch and has to somehow get back up here to feed the 12 volt distribution panel. Correct. Okay. And it would be nice to have a light back here. So yeah, real estate's going to get tight. Right. Um, and all of the servicing items on the engine are here. Right. So we need to have good access into this area. Right. And our motor box will pull off of here, so we get we can get this kind of access to it or close to it. Right. That would be ideal. Right. Okay. So behind this bulkhead, we we put. A new fuel tank. Correct. And we changed the vent location on that tank because it's sitting down quite a bit, which has the advantage that the pickup is on the low end. And we'll be able to get all the fuel out of the tank. Right. We and we'll, and we'll also be able to fill it all up. And particularly so that we could get every bit of fuel out of it. Okay. And we can also, that's going straight up to the cockpit sole, so we can actually sound it with a stick, which is a nice backup to having a, a fuel um, gauge. Right. Well, Cree, it looks like we can get everything in here. I admit it's tight, but it's uh, it's looking really good. It's logical. Everything is accessible, and we can inspect everything, and that's really what I always wanted from the beginning on this boat. When we first got the boat, this space was a mess, and I just can't believe how nice this all looks and how easy it is to 
maintain it now that we have a proper installation. Right, and the key right now is to keep the ease of access right. as, as one of our hallmarks. Okay. When do you think this thing could be ready so that we could go race it? If we can float the boat, we can race the boat. I've got an even bigger goal. What's that, Fred? Well, the granddaddy of all ocean races that this boat was famous for is the Transpac. Whoa. And that's from Los Angeles to Honolulu. I'm going to enter it. In fact, I entered it. And Man. I put you down as co-skipper. <laughs> so you're stuck. You're going with me. And that starts July 3rd of 2017. Wow. And we're going to be on the starting line. And I'd love for you to have you come with me and we'll put a crew together that can drive this thing hard and get to Honolulu. Right now it looks like we have two other boats and I, th I hear rumors of more. So we could actually be fleet racing 50 year old Cal 40s to Honolulu in a fleet. Well, I think it'd be fabulous. That'd be a and lot of fun. It's just incredible to have a whole bunch of Cal 40s, but it'd be great to do, do the race in this boat. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I hope you'll say yes and oh, then, okay. Without qualification. Okay, absolutely. great. Yeah. yeah, that would be absolutely incredible. Yeah. yeah, and I just think the boat's in great shape. She's ready for the trip and we're gonna get it all together and get to the starting line and go for it. Okay, but understand that this is serious and we've got to get a serious crew. Right, It'd be a great but adventure. We've got a ton of sailing needs to happen between right. now and July. Some of it is required by the race committee, so we're gonna have to get going. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. we got to shake this boat out, and the crew has to be organized, Yeah. and the boat's got to be completed. Yeah. And I'm committed to getting into the starting line, Yeah. and if we can get some people together, it'll be a great adventure. But that's not a race to go in at the last minute. No. With the, I mean, I've, yeah. I've been involved in those things where we've... <laughs> bolted together as you go to the starting been bolting line. things together at this no yeah. I'm, and i'll make and sure that we no, have it organized. no fun and it's dangerous right yeah so yeah so, i'd love to do it okay great that'd be a lot of fun <laughs>